Attention shoppers, the First Amendment will be closing in 10 minutes. Hi, I'm Michael Moore, and this is The Awful Truth. You know, if there's anything that we've learned from the evening news, it's that criminals are everywhere. That's why we as Americans are more than happy to give up our civil liberties and allow the authorities to search us at random. So tonight on The Awful Truth, we're going to celebrate our loss of excessive privacy by hiring two ex-New York cops who are going to wander around this area and just grab unsuspecting citizens at random, patting them down for no reason whatsoever. Yo, whoa, 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 Sodas, where are you going? Where are you going? So you take your hands out of your pocket? Mind if we frisk you? Okay. All right, great, good. You don't know what your rights are, that's for sure. What'd you do? Don't ask the questions. I ask the questions, you pay attention. Put your hands up here against the wall. Turn around, turn around. What do you got in the bag? Yeah, it's very serious, huh? Huh? This is harassment. You think it's harassment? I think this is harassment. You haven't seen harassment. You don't know what harassment is. Well, when we're done with you, you'll know what it is. Turn around. I hate this. You know how they say, like, there's a lot of uh, backup in the courts, too many cases, the judges can't hear them all? Right, right. What do you, what do you think's clogging up the courts? Um, I guess just a lot of cases and maybe appeals for cases if people aren't satisfied with appeals? the Appeals? Uh-huh, yeah, it's not that. No, what is it? No, you know what it is? No. There's too many trials. Too many trials? Yeah, well, too many fair trials. Too many fair trials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. true. All right. Well, but listen, there's a place out in California uh -huh. that's figured out how to get rid of all these trials. Really? Yeah. How's that? Yeah. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you how. Okay. Watch this. What would you say if I told you that there is a place where the government has accused nearly 900 people of crimes and then, with no trials, coerced nearly all of them into pleading guilty and going to prison. Which evil totalitarian society would I be referring to? Why, it's none other than beautiful, sunny Nevada County, California, USA, where hundreds of people are arrested and then mysteriously end up in prison without ever getting a trial. Recent investigations have revealed that scores of innocent people around the country are being sent to prison giving the United States a record prison population of over two million citizens, more than Red China or the former Soviet Union. But few tough on crime localities can claim such beautiful scenery as Nevada County. And it's got some of the best damn fishing anywhere in the world. And how many towns can boast an annual Constitution Day parade where the people of Nevada County celebrate those sacred rights guaranteed by our founding fathers that teaches an appreciation for the remarkable document that is at the foundation of our government. But over at the Nevada County Courthouse, it's a different story. My sister Ann started working there a couple of years ago as a public defender for the poor. Within weeks, though, she discovered something fishy going on. The motto of Nevada County has become, come to Nevada County on vacation, leave on probation. It turns out that during 1998, out of nearly 900 low-income people who were arrested and charged with a felony, only one was allowed to have a jury trial. Nearly everyone else was railroaded into accepting a plea bargain of guilt and then shipped off to prison. The Sixth Amendment in the Bill of Rights guarantees the right to a fair trial by a jury of your peers and the right to have a competent lawyer, even if you can't afford one. Everyone is entitled to have their day in court. That's the American way. But inside the Nevada County Courthouse, it was mysteriously empty. In broad daylight, I could find no judges, no juries, no public defenders, no DAs, no trials. Hello? 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 How many times did you go to trial in five years? 
I would say maybe two or three. I don't think two or there three were a, a lot years. of right. Hundreds of people came through your office and you only went to trial two or three times. I'm not disputing that one one felony trial in a year is, That's is, right. is bad. Out of 900 people accused of a that. crime, one gets a trial. I'm talking about where the office is now. Now you've had, then you had five and 99 work. out of right. another eight, 900 people. You know what I'm saying? You know, you've heard of the Sixth Amendment, right? You believe You're saying that right five out of that trial. many is, is uh, too few, you may be right. Why don't you look at our statistics? I did look at them. They're right here. Okay. Goodbye. Here we go. Thank One you. in 98, five in 99. I feel bad you've had to do four more in 99. You know, did you guys demand a pay raise? The public defender says if you want to stay out of prison, if you don't want to do six years in prison, you'll take this deal. If suddenly the person who's supposed to be your advocate is saying, you're going to get 16 years. Now, you want that, or do you want 16 months? Right. What sane person isn't going to sign the document at that point? He told me that with this deal, this is the best thing I could do, or I'm going to get 16 years. We just had a baby, and I got four kids at home. Just bought a house, just bought a truck, and he's telling me, you're going to get 16 years. I'll sign it for a year. They were being herded through court like cattle. They weren't seeing their attorneys before court. They were just shuffled through. They were um, told, well, the DA and I agreed on this, you're going to plead to this, and that'd be it. They'd go into court, the PD would stand up and say, well, this is what the deal is, and the client would be kind of sitting there with his mouth open. He kept bringing up that you are not going to win, uh, no 12 jurors in this county are going to find you, you know, are, are going to find you innocent. And I kept saying, but, you know, it, I, I'm telling you, this is what happened. How could you say that they're not going to find me innocent? Ann decided to blow the whistle on all this, and as a result, she lost her job. But then several investigations were launched, and they acknowledged that people living in poverty were being railroaded into prison. Is there somebody sitting in prison right now who's innocent, I who shouldn't be there? There are lots of people sitting in prison who shouldn't be there, in my view. I know that there are many people who are innocent who are in California prisons today from Nevada County because they were represented by the Nevada County Public Defender's Office. Let's meet a few of the passengers on the Nevada County Prison Railroad. This is Peter Maison. One night back in 1997, his baby boy Luke stopped breathing. Fortunately, his wife is a nurse and revived the child. She gave him a couple of real quick, strong breaths. You know, it didn't mouth happen that mouth to mouth. Looking back over, hit him one more time, and then he started crying. But three weeks later, Luke stopped breathing again, and Peter's wife wasn't home. Uh, turn him over on his back. I, I did the same thing, you know, basically, that, that she had done. Blew in a couple of breaths. I got up, ran to the phone, dialed 911. And in the meantime, he's turning blue. He's not breathing. My son died that morning. How did the Nevada County Police respond to Peter's grief? They charged him with contributing to the death of his child. Peter couldn't afford an attorney and was assigned a public defender. He really didn't do anything. I mean, as far as I'm concerned and as far as my wife is concerned. We are law-abiding citizens. We had an ill son. He died. He would have died no matter what, whether I was home, whether Peter was home. And... Uh, Peter Maison, by all accounts an innocent man, was told by his public defender to plead guilty or risk life in prison. At the time when I was sitting there signing my life away, and I was crying the whole time I was signing this piece of paper, he said, you can always get a job. And he told I, you that? Huh? Yeah, he goes, I said, I can't get a job. I can't get the job I want. No, you can always, you can always get a job at McDonald's. Or... And I'm talking to Meet her. Brian Corrin. He is accused of an assault that several witnesses said he did not commit. His public defender, though, told him he had better plead guilty and take a year in jail. But Brian said, I'm innocent. Or something, he goes, no, you're going to do five years probation, one year of counseling, and one year in a county jail. I said, you never told me that. Well, no, not just now, but I mean, you knew you'd get time out of this, didn't you? No, I didn't. As a matter of fact, I was hoping for a dismissal and an apology. But it ain't Brian Corrin didn't get an apology. In fact, his public defender didn't even show up in court. Brian didn't want to get on the railroad to prison, but nobody at the courthouse was going to stop the train. Not the public defender. How many people did you take to a jury trial? I... Not the DA. Out. Out.
O-U-T, out. Not the county administrator. Are people going to get jury trials? Are defendants My job is to make sure. Crime? I have no idea. You have no idea? No idea. Do you believe in the Sixth Amendment no. to the Constitution? I have no idea what that is. Not even the judge. Maybe in a world of perfect justice, zero trials would be the goal. That's possible. Yeah. That's when presiding judge Carl Bryan explained it all to me. I noticed you got a lot of fishing stuff here. In fact, you did bring your bass rod this uh, time? No, I didn't. But if you got an extra one, well, we could go. You and I can go fishing. We could. Everyone at the courthouse would rather be fishing or doing anything else. Clients sit out in the waiting room while the attorneys were in their offices, basically gossip. Play guitar, photography. Or play solitaire on the computer. I like camping and, and backpacking and stuff. One attorney was rewriting the Bible. <laughs> they all had better things to do than making sure the innocent went free. If, if the police believe that they'll never have to go to court, then how? what is the incentive for them to be good cops, to do their job correctly? There is no incentive. They'll never be held accountable. So I decided, hey, let's just eliminate the middleman, all these useless lawyers and judges, and get everyone ready for jail. First, I read everyone their rights. After all, it is required by law. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak to an attorney. If you cannot afford a lawyer. If you cannot afford a lawyer. That's just too damn bad. That's just too damn bad. Next, I got everyone to sign their guilty plea bargains in advance. Step right up and sign your plea agreement. You'll go to prison right away. Okay, you'll be ready in about 18, 19 years, okay? Has dog ever been in any kind of trouble here in Nevada County? Nothing significant. Right down there. We've been getting these uh, pre-signed plea bargains. If you see any of these people come through, I've already signed it. It says, I did it. I don't need a lawyer. Just send me to prison. Yeah. And for those who missed out signing my plea bargains, I provided free go-directly-to-jail cards. Indigents and low-income people preferably. OK, Nevada County Public Defenders, new business cards, right? And actually, you can give these out to clients because they're a Go directly okay. to jail card. John, John, help me out here. The people here may claim to be innocent, but I didn't want anyone going to prison guilty of a fashion crime. Know when you so I passed out the chic, stylish prison jumpsuits. I'm gonna be an inmate. Guilty, guilty, guilty. They're all guilty. They're poor, they're guilty. <clears throat> Some of the people in Nevada County okay. here. And uh, you guys got the right idea. Just skip Good. all this court stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is a, a little brochure we've put together here called Choosing a Prison. And the judge was more than helpful in suggesting the best prisons to go to. Here's San Quentin. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Folsom there. We've got uh, Soledad. Bill Walker says this one is the, probably the nicest one of the three here that I've got. Look at this guy here. See his arms there? He's trying to get his plea bargain back. <laughs> All aboard, San Quentin, Soledad, Folsom, Grass Valley next stop. Please hop on board, you're already guilty. After just one week in Nevada County, my efforts were a success. Not a single jury trial was in progress by the time I left. California jails kept filling past capacity. And Judge Bryan landed a two-footer. Ooh, mama, the fish are biting. And that county administrator? You and your police arrest 900 people and shove them into prison, and out of the 900, one gets a jury trial? And? You really just don't give a shit, do you? The, well, I, I don't give a shit about your interview. You don't, do you? No. As for Anne, I tried to teach her how to fish, but she wanted to keep fighting the system. And before leaving, I made sure Brian Corrin wasn't railroaded into prison. I got him a real lawyer and paid all the costs. Now he has a fighting chance to prove his innocence. As for that annual Constitution Day parade in Nevada County, I guess there's one less amendment they have to worry about celebrating. Welcome back to The Awful Truth. Well, uh, things are really heating up here on Stop and Frisk Night. Why don't we uh, check in with our friskers and friskies? Hands up against the wall, Junior. You two moms, pops, spread out. Oh, keep your hands up on your head, on your head. Spread them, spread them. All right, 
Five minutes ago. That's great. Welcome to New York. <laughs> what qualities do you think it's important for a policeman to have? Um, big fists. Um, generosity. Quick judgment. Brains. <laughs> well, <laughs> usually that's true, but not in this town in Connecticut that we went to. All right. Yeah. If you have if you have no brains, you're going to do well. But if you got brains, well, our correspondent Jay Martel will show you what I mean. In the Connecticut town of New London, a man was turned down by the local police department for scoring too high on an intelligence test. <laughs> Meet Robert Jordan, bird lover and a guy who's just too darn bright to be a police officer. The personnel director said they didn't want to hire somebody with too high an IQ to be a cop in that town because um, he thought that anyone who was reasonably intelligent would quickly become bored with the tasks uh, associated with being a patrol officer. What, now, what's the test that you took that, that uh, eliminated you from consideration for police work? The Wonderlick. The Wonderlick is a test used by hundreds of police departments and other employers to determine who to hire. Robert Jordan wasn't hired because he answered too many questions like this one correctly. In the set of the words below, which word is different from the others? Beef, mackerel, veal, bacon, or lamb? According to the Wonderlick, Robert's score qualified him to be a lawyer, but it was too high for him to be a cop. Well, if you ask me, I want any cop patrolling my street to know the difference between meat and a mackerel. I went to talk to Richard Brown, the town manager of New London, and the man responsible for rejecting Robert Jordan's application. What the test did was establish various ranges, and through some statistical correlation, they determined that people within certain ranges achieved a degree of job satisfaction and were likely to be happy and therefore stay on the job. See, this is the, the Wonderlick score preferred for police. And here it is for insurance salesmen. And it, it's actually higher for insurance salesmen. And I'm just wondering, like, I mean, if you wanted to call a cop, you'd want someone who is smarter than an insurance salesman. No, uh, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I couldn't believe anyone would actually want dumb cops. I needed to make sure that town manager wasn't pulling my leg. In the set of the words below, which word is different from the others? Beef, mackerel, veal, bacon, or lamb? Can't say as I know, sir. If I ordered three donuts at 25 cents each, how much would the total be? We got to drive over to New Haven 150 miles. If we drive the speed limit, how long will it take us? To New Haven, 150 miles, to drive the speed limit? Yeah. You know, 55 miles an hour, I don't know how many, how many miles in New England. 150. 150? Right. Uh, I don't know. Um, we're driving to Hartford, it's 150 miles away. If we drive Hartford the... Hartford is 30 miles away. It's 30 miles away? If we drive the speed limit, how long will we get? How long? 45 minutes. 45 minutes? Uh huh. Okay. Are you with the New London Police? No. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Excuse me, officer. How far is it to Hartford? Okay. Yeah, they were dumb all right, and I wasn't the only guy who knew it. There's plenty of times I, I, I should have been in jail for things, and they was not on point enough. Oh, really? They didn't even catch. They weren't even that close. <laughs> they get things late, you know what I mean? They're always like two or three beats behind, it sounds like. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't concern you at all that the criminals may be testing higher than, than the cops? Nope. It doesn't concern me at all. My job is to enforce crime, that's all. Enforce crime? Day. You really say enforce crime? This wasn't good. There had to be some way to get smarter cops on the streets. What was your score? 33. What did they say a, a, someone who, who would be a good cop would score? 21 to 26 was the ideal score according to the Wonderlick organization. So if you had just missed seven answers, you might have been in like Flynn. I would have been successful in my quest. Well, if Robert needed a lower test score, I could help. After a day of busy preparation, Robert was ready to retake the Wonderlick. 
Ready? And... It was vital to the safety of the community that Robert score very, very low. Land where my fathers died. We're done, Bob. Perfect, Bob. 21. You did it, man. They're going to be a cop. Come on, man. Let's go down to City Hall. Town manager's going to hire you as soon as he sees us. Look, Mr. Jordan's here, and he retook the test here. Look, he, he didn't score very well at all this time. It was 21. He scored 21, see? I spent the whole day with him, and he's really not that bright. He's been working on this Rubik's Cube all morning. Right here. I'm, a I'm asking you to leave. He's had this dream of being a cop all his life, and it's just, this test is in the way, but we figured out what ways of, to dumb what, what him down. What part of me telling you that this is true that you don't understand? Well, the part I didn't understand is you not taking this test and okay. saying that you would consider right, it. If you, if you aren't going to leave my office, then I will leave, and we're done. And if you don't leave the building in a few minutes, then I will have you removed. By who? He couldn't bear to say it. We must have killed like two or three million brain cells today. Wow. Thank you. Um, that wasn't exactly the response we were hoping for. Um, don't you think that the citizens might want like smarter cops? Sir, get. I was beginning to get the feeling that Robert Jordan would never be a new London police officer. But I did know someone who might need a smart cop. We like smart cops on our show, and that's why tonight we decided to give Robert a job right here on our staff uh, to be uh, one of our security guards. So, uh, you know, we appreciate your intelligence. Thank you for being here. Thank you for All the right. opportunity you have afforded me here. Well, it's, it's great to have you here. And uh, by the way, what's the square root of 36? I think it might be six. No, she made see, I told you. We got the right guy. Okay, listen, it's stop and frisk night here, so I need you to, to go and, and frisk some, like maybe that guy know. that guy standing over there watching us. Just Sorry. go frisk him and, and frisk anybody else you see around me here tonight, okay? All right. We'll be back uh, with more of Stop and Frisk Night right here on the Awful Truth right after this. Well, that's our show for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, listen, if you want to learn more about law enforcement, try getting arrested or check us out on the World Wide Web. We'll be back again next week at this time. Okay, man. <laughs> right here on, on The Awful Truth. Yeah, I'm clean, all right? Jeez. I'm gonna jump a little serious. Oh, jumping buttons all over the place. Hey, wise cat. Do me, do me, Steve.